That's the thing. It's like, I think too, like, yeah, I think when you're in person, it's just different. Or even like on video, it's different because a lot of times I think people are just saying stuff because they don't really think that there's any repercussions. For it. It's like a venting session. Mm -hmm. And I think, and the other thing is if it was in person or if it was through video, you wouldn't, even the audience wouldn't let you get away with saying the things that you have been saying in the comments. Because if I'm sitting up here with you and you're cussing me out and doing saying the same thing you put in the comments, it comes across differently when you actually watch two people communicate like that versus just reading their comments. Yep. Like then you would have to say, yeah, Jerome is out of line. Mm -hmm. But as long as he stays in the comments, nobody really pays attention to him. But if you actually watched Jerome talk to me like that, I think you would have to be like, yeah, Jerome, he got to chill out. Mm -hmm. And then even your audience, because I realized too, the importance of, of having audience that support you. Cause I've had people that have came for me and, and there's people that will actually come to my aid and be like, nope, he ain't even me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beauty of it too. That is, that's why on any, like you will not, you have not ever seen me in the comments on any of those videos mm -hmm. because I don't like it's it's a lose it's a losing battle when you yeah. start trying to defend yourself and like respond to everybody's comment and clear up it's hard to see people misunderstand or take what you say out of context but it doesn't really benefit you to go in there and start responding to everybody I literally love watching like you said some people come in and they're clarifying what I said mm -hmm. or like I don't know what you or questioning like what makes you feel like she's delusional? Like what? And then they, they it's crickets. They have nothing to say. Yep. Like, Cause you just came up with that out of the blue. Like, yep. Yeah. That's, that's one of the beautiful things of social media. Uh, what is the biggest mistake you see women make when it comes to dating? I think that a lot of women have not taken the time to really figure out what they expect. And I don't think a lot of women have put proper boundaries in place either. Mm. So like I have a video, interestingly, I have a video that's um, posting tomorrow night on my channel that talks about the five mistakes women are making that are preventing men from committing. Ooh. And um, a lot of those things that I have identified in that video are as a result of women not putting expectations and boundaries in place. So I think that from what I'm seeing, women are having a problem where it's difficult for them to get men to commit. They're finding themselves in like situationships mm -hmm. or like friends with benefits mm -hmm. or just not really having any title on what's going on or finding themselves in dating scenarios where they've been exclusively dating someone, they have kids with someone and that man still won't commit with marriage. So I think that that's the biggest issue that we're having in the mistake that's associated with that is not setting expectations and boundaries. So a lot of times when we talk about expectations, it's not just expectations for the other person, expectations for me. So like, how do I expect to be treated? What are my expectations for this relationship? A lot of women, I think, feel a bit timid when it comes to actually saying what they want. And so they'll go along with this, like going with going with the flow mm -hmm. scenario, knowing that that's not what they want. And when they bring up this conversation to men about wanting a commitment, wanting to be in a relationship, the man is like, well, I'm just taking my time. I don't want to be rushed into anything. <laughs> and women are like buying into that. Mm -hmm. And then they're saying, oh, OK, it's cool. It's cool. Like, I'm cool because they don't want to lose the man. Mm -hmm. And then they end up unhappy and in a situation where they've been with this man for some period of time and he still won't make a commitment. But you weren't firm on your expectations and your boundaries. And then boundaries are simply what is expected or what systems I'm putting in place if I don't get what I'm requiring. That's what a boundary is. Mm -hmm. It keeps everything on track. So if you're just letting him dictate everything and you're letting him choose to not put commitment in place, but you're still giving him everything that he would get with a commitment in place, there's no incentive for him to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not like the light bulb is going to change and he's like, oh, let me go and buy her a wedding ring. He deserves it now. <laughs> no, like, he's not going to think like, like, why would he do that? Right. Like, 
I still stand by, I don't think most men, I think there are some men who desire marriage, that desire to build a family like that. I think most men are okay with just having like a lifelong partner, but I think a lot of men don't necessarily see the benefit or like the necessity of marriage in the same way that women do. Yeah, but let me let me say this real quick, because I think most men, and I talked about this in a video about uh, most men shouldn't marry until at least 35 and older. See. So when when I when I when I hear conversations like with Alan, because he's younger, mm -hmm. I, I would expect that kind of logic to come from him. Mm -hmm. No shade or anything, but because mm -hmm. he's younger, but let's talk to Alan 10 years from now. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I'm I'm talking on the other end of the spectrum. You know, I didn't <laughs> I, I done been there, you know what I'm saying? I I've been around for a while. So, yeah. Uh yeah. So I think it just depends on the man because and I'm really not a big advocate of men marrying younger because there are a few exceptions. Mm -hmm. but for the most part i don't think most men and and the pushback that i got from women was so what are we supposed to do we supposed to wait until they mature and until we get married you know because women are dealing with a biological time clock mm -hmm. you know so that's a that's a whole conversation within itself so. i've heard a lot of the men in that scenario that agree with what you're saying they're saying that women should um do the whole age gap dating situation so that you're picking men mm -hmm. that are like 35 and up mm -hmm. and then that kind of balances that out you know mm -hmm. so that you're able to get them when they're ready to settle down without having like if I find i.e if like there's a man like maybe I'm 26 and then I find a man that's 37 realistically he should be Shoot. closer to a place of wanting to settle down relatively soon you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm 12 years older than my wife. Like, really? Yeah, I'm 12 years old. Like when we married, she was 28. She just turned 28 and I was 40. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, but, but she grew up with old school parents. Because mm. there was a big age gap in between her parents too. So to her, marrying older didn't mean much. She was like, oh, okay. I've seen, I've seen this growing up. So, yeah. You know. 12 years is, is a. So is it, is there any difference, like, I guess, from your perspective in terms of her being that much younger than you, is it different dealing with her versus dealing with women that are your age? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a difference because my first wife and because and people will say I was having a midlife crisis because I married somebody that was that much younger than me. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess let's let's throw a little humor in this. My wife, my ex-wife's son, my ex-wife's son is the same age as my wife. Really? Yes. And me and him are cool to this day. <laughs> That's funny. So like her, your wife now and him could be like friends, like like in the same age group. Yep. Could have went to school together. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's so, funny. Yeah, but I, anyway, anyway, I'll just I'll throw a little humor in there. Um, the difference between marrying an older woman and a younger woman, like younger women have a, a sense of uh, almost kind of like hope. Uh, they have like a um optimism. Yeah, like uh -huh. we can do this, we can, you know what I'm saying? When you're a little older, you're kind of jaded by the world. I've heard that. So that's true. From what you've seen, that's true. From what I've seen, yeah. Okay. And younger, yeah, and younger women are younger women are they're almost like more fun. Mm. They, they like fun. They still like to do things, you know. Um, mm -hmm. you know, my wife and I went to Jamaica a couple years ago. You know, we went zip lining, stuff like that. This is just more fun and that's no shade to older women i'm sure there's some older women that's like you know i'll run 30 miles and all sorts of stuff and i get it but <laughs> um, <laughs> there are some benefits though to uh to being with a young woman but a lot of that has to do with her having older parents i would like to throw mm -hmm. that in there you know mm -hmm. 
So mm-hmm. she still has those old school morals and values. So is that, I don't want to, you know, because I, I can ask, I can start asking all these questions. I don't want to. Uh... We, we, Yana, we kicking it. <laughs> let, let me just, let me, uh, look, we, we kicking it. You're you're open to ask whatever you want. Okay. I, so, I reach out to you. <laughs> so in, so were you seeking more of like a traditional marriage? Because you said like your wife has traditional um, values and things like that. Is that what you were seeking? Yes. Okay. Now, the funny thing with that is she grew up Muslim. Really? Yeah. So mm-hmm. that was one thing that I like about her. And she's Christian now, but she can look at both ends of the spectrum and respect the religions and, and the things that come with it you know mm-hmm. and so she has mm-hmm. these morals and back so was I looking for that yes but at the same time I was looking for somebody to uh to, to have fun with somebody that I can enjoy life with somebody who had the same morals and values um yeah that's that's what I was looking for okay so how quickly did you know that? Because I know you said y'all got married, like, what did you say, six like six months? months? Yeah. How quickly did you know that, like, this was it? Because it had to be before that. So Yeah. Well, we got engaged in three months. <laughs> that is crazy. And so we, what we, was the moment that you knew? Was there, like, a specific moment? Uh, I think it was the first time I went to go kick it with her because we didn't meet in person we used to talk on skype every night oh um and i always tell people this i had already in my mind set up what i was looking for and then what it took for me to have that and i think a lot of people just look just to get into relationships just to be with somebody i was like i need somebody that's well read you know i need somebody to have morals and values so we would read books every night on skype Oh. oh that's nice yeah so that was something that she met and i was like okay this shows consistency Mm. this shows that she's willing to be in agreement with me because i brought it up and she was like yeah let's do it oh we had we had bible study once a week we would be on our bible app because there was a girl that i was talking to before i met my wife she was just like uh that bible stuff is cool but that's not me right and no shade to her if she's watching the show because I think she's subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> and she's good people, you know what I'm saying? But that just wasn't her thing. So that let me know I, I, I'm not trying to marry that. Mm-hmm. I need somebody who loved God more than me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. those, those were two things that uh, she was agreeable. Mm-hmm. Um, she loved God outside of me. She wasn't doing it just to try to oh, please me. Yeah. You know, um, and like she she just spoke life to me she was just she was just like you can do anything you want like she was my biggest cheerleader right um she just always looked out for me like she would always cut my hair for me and she would dye my beard you know she Aww. did that last night right you know I always tell people people like oh you how you where your grades at she just dyed my that's beard. what I was thinking when you said 45 I was like that beard is mighty black (laughs) (laughs) yeah she just yeah she dyed my beard and 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 she even gave me little tips and pointers on like with marketing and and the way I should run this business and stuff like that just from a a younger woman's perspective yeah because it's different right so I know one of the things I talked about I'm sure you saw it in that conversation the live the four and a half hour live was about the multiplication powers of a woman have you seen that within your relationship? I'm so glad that you brought that to the forefront. <laughs> I don't think that piece of the segment got the the respect that it should have gotten. I don't think so either. It it was so powerful because when you talk about the multiplication, you talk about the kingdom woman, right? Yes. That's a that's the piece I think that most I won't say all, but some some women don't tap into yeah um because y'all are so powerful like i don't think women understand how powerful they are some women are but they mm-hmm. use it in, in a negative reasons. way yeah 
right um the power for multiplication yes i've seen men who you know they was doing good or whatever they was doing okay or maybe they were struggling and she came along and believed in them boom i just don't think you can have i think every successful man you got to have that woman that's women have a, a intuition uh and it's funny because in the bible the the bible describes wisdom in the feminine yes it's her or it's her. she yeah she, right uh-huh. uh-huh you never see wisdom talk about he it has feminine pronouns mm-hmm. yeah so you you find you and to any man that's listening find you a wise woman and she'll multiply your lifetime 10 i've seen it too many times so yeah yeah i think there is a lot of i think I think men don't even know to look for that. And I think it's harder to see. So they don't even know how to look for that in a woman because the things that I hear men prioritize in conversation are things that are easier to see, like fit, feminine, friendly. Like it's easier to see that versus a woman that has discernment or that is wise because that takes you one, it takes you being vulnerable with her about what's going on in your life to see if there is wisdom and discernment within that woman. But then two, if you as a man lack discernment, you're, like your spirit is not even going to resonate with a woman that has discernment either. Like You're not even going to be able to recognize her. Mm-hmm. So I think um, both of those things are true. But I think a lot of men, from what I've seen, If they are not, I think it takes a certain type of man to understand the value in that. I think society has conditioned men to believe that women are below them. And so when you start to talk about a woman having the ability to multiply or to bring out better versions of men, I think men get offended by that because it, it, I think in the, their interpretation is that she is better like she's I don't know like she's up here and she's bringing him up like nobody's saying that she's above him and bringing him up she's saying like he she's beside him and like pushing him forward like I don't I don't know or like holding his hand and like walking with him I think the visual is different yeah yeah when you talked about that yeah I wish yeah but since you're here we can talk about it Please talk about this because I think people need to hear this. And again, like you said, with men, I think some men just not looking to tap into that piece. They're not looking to to tap into uh, the value of a woman in general. They think a value of a woman is what's between her legs. Yeah. And they get caught up on that alone. To me, I always tell people like, and I'm not bragging, the sex is going to come. You know what I'm saying? Like guys be so caught up in trying to get it. I'm like, focus on who she is as a woman. And you're going to have, you're going to appreciate her in the long term when you see that she's better than just what she is in the bedroom. You know? Yeah, sex can't sustain a relationship. It can't. You know what I'm saying? Too many. And that's why I think most men should marry older. Because young guys, they're only thinking about one thing. They ain't thinking about a woman having wisdom. Right. That's not even a consideration. <laughs> right. Like, what do I need wisdom for? I'm wise. I don't yeah, that. I'm strong. Yeah, yeah, I'm a leader. She's not going to tell me what to do. And it's right. like, that's such an immature way of thinking. Because even, le- the, even the greatest leaders had counsel. Like, they had advisors. And, I mean, the most powerful people even in the world now, you think they're just sitting making decisions on their own. They have advisors and people that they go to for perspective. That's what a woman, that's the role that a woman plays in a man's life when they're married. She's that person. There was a, there was a quote that said, you never make an important decision without a woman in a room. Mm. Oh, I like that one. And I've, li- I've lived by that. Really? That's only according to people who have women who have your best interest. And I'm not going to say that yeah. there's some janky ones out there. There's some some ones out there that, you know, uh, even even with what I'm doing right now, Kiana, I have a council of women. Mm. Everybody that helped me get to where I am with doing this stuff, it comes from women who have my best interest. 
the problem with men supporting other men is there's always egos involved. It's all about yeah. who's whose nuts are bigger, who, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it ain't, yeah. it ain't based on that. Very few men have a, a attitude of, of serving. So, but that's another. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. I got thoughts on that one, but yeah. But if you I... want to share those thoughts, feel free to share. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I got you now, you know, you, you here. I mean, if you got some insight, let's, let's, let's rope this thing. Yeah. And I think, I think that's one of the things I don't know when, I don't know if me and Alan talk. Oh, it's on the episode that when I was interviewing him, the episode that went out yesterday mm-hmm. and I was saying how, I think it, I think it is a bit unfortunate how a lot of men um, want to be established before they settle down because a lot of women are, are willing to help expedite the process with them. Like I get it. I understand just from a lot of different aspects like maturity as well as financially professionally that it it makes it can make a lot of sense for men to wait to settle down but I do think in mass women are willing to support and they are willing to do like those little things that help make that process quicker and but if you're not settled down with a woman that's not all women not all women have the 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 I don't know. Like they don't, not all women have those characteristics where they're even useful in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why, again, I think that dating is hard going back to like the very first question you asked me. I think dating is difficult because I'm not going to say how they say like women are not built how they used to be. I think women are a lot in a lot of ways, we're a lot more evolved than how our grandmothers were because we do have more skills than just what is inside the household but I don't think a lot of I think a lot of women are used to applying those skills within the workplace, but not figuring out how to apply those to a man. And I think that if we can, because a lot of those skills are transferable, like mm-hmm. what would what would be required for a woman to be successful in business could probably be used to be successful within her relationship or within helping him build whatever he's trying to build as well. But because there isn't a glorification on marriage and togetherness and those things, they don't really see the necessity to do that. And if men aren't settling down, I can't even really advocate for women to invest all of this into a man that won't commit either. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a multi-tiered problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that goes back to uh, um, submitting yourselves one to another, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we always talk about this whole submission piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, woman submit and all this other stuff. And I always tell men that if you have to make an announcement that you're a leader, you're probably not. Yeah. You know, I'm the head oh, of this house. Yeah. If you got to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Something's not right. You know. <laughs> Like leadership doesn't have to make an announcement. Yeah. Yeah. You you know, if you, if you look at, at when David, when he became King, right. When, when, when they was looking for him, you know, he he wasn't even in a room with any of them. He was out there tending sheep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So leadership, you don't even have to say anything. It just, it just permeates. It just shows on its own, Mm -hmm. you know? So, Mm -hmm. uh, but like I was saying, I think with most men, I don't think they're looking for that kind of, like you talk about the kingdom woman. I think that's for mature men. Um, that's okay with submitting themselves one to another. I think that's an issue with men because they still feel like, oh, she ain't submitting to me then, you know, and it's just like, eh, really? <laughs> you know. Yeah, and I think as much as um, I'm hearing a lot of conversation about men believing that women want all this excitement and that's why they go for men that aren't necessarily the best for them. I think when men kind of, they want a bit of excitement too. The kingdom woman is probably not the most exciting woman, like in comparison to some of the others that will do, they do some other things. Like she's, she's going to be, she's intentional. So she's not going to just be like up for whatever. She's not, going to just be doing all of these things for nothing like she has requirements because she brings something substantial to the table so she moves differently 
So that like the respect that that type of woman even has for herself can be a bit off putting for men as well because she's requiring more from you. And if you are used to being able to just kind of do what you want to do without mm-hmm. that, it's like, why would I, why would I do that? That she's asking for when there's all these other women that aren't requiring that. Yep. And if you don't understand the value in a woman like her, then you'll miss that, that she's requiring that, but she comes with more. And those women that don't require that are missing some of those aspects that you're not going to find in anyone, but that type of woman. Yep. And, you know, most, a lot of people are going to be lazy about being intentional. So they always going to go with the easier, you know, so when, so a lot of times we, when I hear guys speak about bitterness, about being mad at women and women ain't this and women ain't that, that's because they're chasing and no shade. That's because they're chasing the IG models. They're chasing the women that they only choose a select kind of man. He got to have a blue check mark. Mm-hmm. Or he got to, you know, these kind mm-hmm. of things. So those guys get mad at them because they tried to shoot their shot. And check this out. This is a, just a small example. Guys, this is what bothers me about men. You will see an IG model and in a comment section, you will see all these guys. Hey, beautiful. Hey, sweetheart. All these. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking... And even when I was single, I never did that. Cause I'm thinking she's not going to be paying attention to any of y'all. What's the, what's the chances of you just because you said, Hey, beautiful. Like you thought she was going to slide in your deal. No, probably not. Probably not. Unless you also have like a blue check next to your name and she like, you're familiar and she knows, and you're like Michael B. Jordan or somebody like, you know, like somebody that she knows of already, which he's probably not doing that anyway. He's not going to be, sliding under her picture comment like that right right i um i agree with you i definitely (laughs) i agree with you i think that that's so it's crazy because yeah i agree (laughs) i I do you you could say it this is (laughs) this is totally unfiltered (laughs) this is this is totally unfiltered so if you got to say it, just say it. Yeah, I just, I think that, I think that when it comes to to these types of situations, I do think that there's just a lot of, a lot of attention given to the types of people that are not wanted in these spaces. So <laughs> like, I think that men, like you said, they, they're hurt and you know, things have happened in these situations and you want the IG model because she's pretty and she whatever, but you don't know her. So a type, the type of woman that gets that type of attention and that all of these things come with that as well. Like it's not. And if you're that upset by being rejected by that woman, you probably wouldn't be equipped to handle with the attention even that she Mm. gets. So are you really equipped to handle what you think that you want? And for a lot of us, that's no, but you didn't really take that into account. Like the, even for women, the woman that wants the doctor, are you prepared for him to be on call and have to potentially miss holidays or things like that? Or, you know, you haven't spent a lot of time by yourself or raising your kids by yourself. Like, are you prepared for that? in saying that that's what you want. Like, I just urge people to really think about all of the other things that come with what you're asking for. Yeah, and like I said, they can't, they probably can't keep up with the attention that she's getting. She's getting, uh, you know, 20, 30 DMs a day and and, and 800 comments a day, you know, and, and you, you spend your time on her Instagram. <laughs> talking about who is this? That's right. what you signed up for. She was like that when you met her. Yeah. So when guys talk all that bitterness stuff, women are trash and, and you got these guys, they have millions of subscribers on YouTube. I get it. It's it, kind of, it's easy to build a platform full of bitter people. It's a lot oh, of them yeah. out here. It's you know a lot saying? of them. And yeah. they're like wanting to consume content that validates their feelings. Yep. All because of the, the high school cheerleader told you no and she was with the high school quarterback 
and she slept with him and he's pissed because the high school quarterback discarded the girl that you liked. Yeah, now you're bitter about that. I had, um, in that conversation that aired yesterday, I had made the comment that I hear men talk a lot about like these pookies and Ray Rays and they talk about, you know, <laughs> and I made the comment, like, I've never, I've never dated a pookie and a Ray Ray. So I don't believe that the majority of women go for those men, the way that men are saying that they do, like, they're like, they want excitement and those men provide excitement. I'm like, I don't even know people that have dated Pookies and Ray Rays. And then later in the conversation, I'm like, I don't even really 100% know what a Pookie and a Ray Ray is. And they were like, well, how do you say you've never dated one if you're saying you don't know what they are? Because (laughs) I have never dated a man that I would use derogatory language to speak about. Mm. I don't. I, I have, even in situations where it didn't work out, I have not dated men that were bad. Mm. Like, I think that's the impression that some people have is that if it didn't work out, he must have been bad or like you didn't pick a good man. He can be a good man and still not be a good fit for me. And that is what that is evidence of. The fact that we're not together is evidence that he wasn't a good fit for me. But that doesn't mean that I picked a bad man. The assumption that if a woman is not married, that she's just dated all these bad men in her past Yep. is not that's not true and i feel like that that casts a bad light for men to even be saying that because that implies that the majority of men are bad like and that i don't think that that's even accurate i think there are obviously some men that have negative traits we're all human so none of us are just perfect but i don't think the vast majority of men or women are bad people so I've never, I don't, I haven't dated. I, I can't say that I've aligned myself with men that I would use derogatory language to speak about. But you probably knew your worth too. Yeah, no, that's so, true. That, that, I that's, go through, my vetting process is different. See, see see what I'm saying? Intense. Because you have one sets you apart from a lot of other women. <laughs> <laughs> like I know very quickly if somebody is not a good fit for me, but I ask intentional questions and I seek to know, I don't think a lot of, and I think that's why some men get hurt in ways that you described. I I know I have been in situations where I have like, because I ask a lot of questions, it's easy for me to get to know people without them getting to know me. And so uh, people can get bogged down in my questions that it kind of, throws them off and they don't ask me questions in return and so I've been in situations where I've been like talking to a man for like three months and he didn't even know what my last name was but I knew a lot about him so I think but my vetting process and for me that was a red flag as well that you you didn't take time to get to know me even though I got to know you you didn't reciprocate in getting to know me that's a problem but I think that we, all of us, have to do a better job vetting people and being intentional to get the outcomes that we're saying that we want. Yes. I believe in dating intentionally. I created a whole course for it. That's like mm-hmm. people ask the wrong questions and then they wonder why they with the wrong person. Yeah. Like there's been so many times I've been out to dinner and I see two people that are on a date and they're like, mm-hmm. like, in head in the phone like not not saying anything really to each other like those are opportunities for you to even if you've been together for a while there's always new because we're always growing there's always new opportunities to learn who this person is now I heard somebody say once that when you're married or it was they had been married for about like 20 something years and they were like I have been married to 10 different versions of this woman because, and then I had to get to know her every time she became a new version. And I think that that's important is that we don't, we're not staying the same. And we talked about this a little bit in the conversation that went up yesterday about men and women have different expectations. So like women are expecting women anticipate that men will change and then kind of get a little discouraged if they don't grow with them 
on men, on the other hand, want women to stay the same. And so when they do change, it's difficult for them to manage that and understanding that she's not the same as she was when I met her, or when I married her. So like there's that disconnect there. But I think it's realistic to expect that people that are lifelong learners are going to change yeah. as time progresses. And so being invested in, I'm not just choosing you for who you are now, I'm choosing you for all versions that you may come as, as we move forward. That is so true. I love that. Cause TD Jakes, he talked about it, how you gotta be willing to hold on in a turn. He's talking about when people mm -hmm. are on a motorcycle, mm -hmm. somebody's holding on the back of you. If you're not holding on, you're going to lose them in the turn, right? Yeah. That was something that, that I went through in my first marriage that we didn't turn at the same time. We weren't making these turns. And on top of that, I wasn't aware enough to pay attention to where she mm. where where she was currently in her life. I was still stuck on the old version. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So so now, now that I've learned, now that I'm older, <laughs> I've learned like, okay, even with my wife now, we're coming up on five years. She's changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where people get divorced because y'all not willing to grow together. Um, even now, like we have our little nighttime regimen where we read in the book together. We read mm -hmm. a book before we go to bed together. And it just gives us this, this conversation of where you at right now? Yeah. How you feeling? You know what I'm saying? Or how about this? Uh, how can I serve you today? That's, That's something I ask. How, how can I serve you today? How can, you know what I'm saying? So depending on her need, it helps me to see where she's at because her love language might've switched up. Mm-hmm. That's good because it does. It changes. As you change, you require different things in order to like really fill you up. Like how people say, fill up your buckets. Like mm -hmm. it might change. Whereas I really resonated with this back in the day. That doesn't really do it for me anymore. I'm I'm a little bit different. And I think it helps if you're with someone that is invested in accommodating whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And and I not now that I think about it, when you asked me like what did I like about my wife, it was the uh the commitment to self-help and self-growth mm -hmm. and self-awareness. Those things are huge to me. Like to be invested, because I always tell people, people talk about they want relationships. How much have you invested in becoming a better version of you? Mm -hmm. People, oh, I'm I'm this, I'm that. What was the latest book you read? Mm -hmm. what was the latest conference you've been to mm -hmm. what was the last you know whatever but yeah because yeah, you're gonna put your money where your you're gonna put your money your, your money where your time is or you know so yeah I think a lot of people um are so hyper focused on titles and things like that that's why a lot of times whenever I do like any event or anything like that when I ask people to introduce themselves mm -hmm. I say introduce yourself, but I don't want you to use any titles, any accomplishments, mm -hmm. any any of those things, because a lot of times we lead with that. Like I'm the CEO of this company mm -hmm. or I'm a husband, a wife. Like how many of the things that you are don't like can't be taken away from you because mm -hmm. God forbid your children are taken away from you or your job is taken from you or your business is taken from you what who are you at the core away from all of the things that could be taken away from you like who are you and I think that that shifts how people talk about themselves when they have to do it from that aspect versus all these accomplishments because we hide behind accomplishments sometimes mm -hmm. because the first thing especially with men we struggle with that First thing that men talk about, and I think y'all, I think you and Adam. They didn't like when I said that. They didn't like it <laughs> when you they talked about like uh. Who, now I will say there is some truth to that though, Kiana. As far <laughs> as men are valued based on what we can provide. Yeah, I think I think in society that's definitely true. I think for a from a personal standpoint. Mm -hmm. We all need to have confidence that's rooted in something other than no, accomplishments. Agree. Because again, my question is, if everything gets taken away from you, are you able to bounce back? Mm -hmm. Or 
I was only valuable as long as I was able to do X, Y, and Z. And now that I, that's why so many college athletes have such a hard time adjusting to the world after they stop playing sports or um, professional athletes or people that were good in high school. And then once they didn't play in college and they didn't go to college or whatever, now they're trying to figure out who they are and like trying to re identify themselves as something that is valuable in the world. So many of the things that we're using to, to justify our value could be taken away from us. And if they do, do you still have confidence in your abilities and your, um, and just in the ability to be able to create something from scratch? Mm. But very few people, and, and I'll say this boldly, very few people know who they are. Out, very few people don't know who they are outside of their possessions. Mm -hmm. very few so could it possibly be that this whole dating and relationship thing is is probably not working because we don't know who we are as people I do think that part of that is partially true so like um so I wrote a book called ready to mingle and the title in itself is just out of the way that a lot of times people get out of relationships and then they're like, I'm single and ready to mingle, <laughs> yeah. but they're still dealing with the stuff from the last relationship. They're still, they might've been crying last night and then they're out here in the club trying to find somebody new. Yeah. So a lot of times we don't intentionally deal with and get to know who we are. And so then we end up, end up pairing with people that aren't in alignment with who we are and what we need and what we desire and where we want to go and who we want to be. And so there has to be some unpacking and some just effort to really get to know ourselves before we go out and start to pair with anybody in any way. So I'm not even talking about just relationships, but typically you see some connection between your outcomes in all areas of your life. So your success in business or some of the things you're struggling with in business might have some relation to some of the same issues that you're seeing within your relationships. Because if you can't communicate well with your spouse, can you communicate well with your employees or with your customers? Probably not. Right. If you are dishonest in business practices, are you honest within your relationship? Probably not. Like, And maybe not to the same scale, but I advocate for people to kind of get themselves to a place where they can create healthy relationships or facilitate healthy relationships before getting into business partnerships, mm -hmm. before dealing with friends, with family members, with romantic relationships. You got to deal with your stuff first because the stuff you haven't dealt with, it travels with you and other people end up getting impacted by that. Yeah. So I definitely think that there could be a lot of truth to the fact that our dating practices and the dating culture is getting hit really hard because we don't know who we are and we don't know what we need. And it's hard to address issues that you haven't even identified. Mm -hmm. It's like me trying to, I know that something's not right with me. And so I just go into Walgreens and just buy up a whole bunch of medicine. I don't know what the problem is, but I would just take all this different medicine and hope that something helps the illness that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. It would be more effective. Yeah, you probably you might eventually come across a medicine that helps what you're dealing with mm -hmm. eventually, mm -hmm. but it would probably make more sense to diagnose the issue first and then go and get the, the correct remedy for that. That would definitely be a quicker process. Mm -hmm. And then you're more you're intentional about trying to get the necessary help you need opposed to hurting people along the way exactly mm -hmm. yeah because in the time it took you you took antibiotics you took nyquil you took robitussin you took so now your kidneys are taking a hit because of all this medicine mm -hmm. you know like you have all these issues now because you've been treating you've been trying to treat something that wasn't even the problem and all medicines have side effects the yeah. same thing with every person that you come into contact with they're going to influence your life in some way. Mm -hmm. So that's why I am an advocate for, I I limit people's access to me for sure. That's I don't, love. yeah, I don't even like to be in the presence of a lot of people all the time because mm -hmm. I have to protect my energy because I know that, I know that I'm, I'm susceptible to feeling people. 
So I have to limit my interaction and confine it to certain people. Mm-hmm. No, I, I totally agree about that. You got to protect the energy. Because uh, there's a lot of people out here doing all kind of stuff. <laughs> Craziness. And it will it will spill over to you if you are not careful. You think that oh, I'm an independent thinker and I'm doing my own thing. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, I tell people the second biggest decision you will make in life is the person you decide to marry. Because they have the power to make or break you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it'll be subtle. Mm. Yeah, because I mean. I... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, if you are invested in what marriage actually represents, then that person that you choose, they they shift all of your priorities. So if you are going to be in alignment with what marriage is supposed to be, this person low key is like not your whole world, but like they're. You, they are. Yeah, like that you make your decisions dependent on them at this point so you got to be careful with that now if you're going to just treat marriage however you want to treat it and you just doing what you want to do regardless and they just kind of there along for the ride then that's one thing they don't really I guess they don't really matter but like if you want to treat marriage as it was intended to be then it matters mm-hmm. yeah and I think I'm I think I'm just more of a relational type of guy I think I'm you know I'm, I'm really not the type who had a whole bunch of women and I like mm. mm. but that's another topic for another time <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different don't let me get started a single Sean what his practices were like <laughs> <laughs> my my single practices were yeah I I had I had some you know what let me just say this <laughs> <laughs> let, me just, let me just say this real quick don't I'll get clear. yourself in trouble sean don't get oh, yourself in trouble no nah, i'm good my wife always, you know, i'll be telling all my business on here um <laughs> the biggest the the thing that i've learned about relationships is and some people agree and some people don't but based on your confidence level is the person that you're going to choose yes they go yes. because i can look at no shade to none of my exes if y'all subscribed i love y'all you know we cool but some of the people you know it's about chose, to be wild. You know it's about to be wild. Whatever you about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this: it was based on my confidence level. Now, that wherever I, wherever mm. I was in life, that was my confidence level. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So people be talking. You know, I, I, you know, I tell people even with with my ex, I'm like, I, I never talk bad about my ex wife because mm-hmm. I'm like, I chose her. Yeah. Ain't nobody hold no gun yeah. in my head. Yeah, for better or worse, you chose that woman. Yeah, right. I I I chose her based on my confidence. I'm glad you said that because I think that a lot of people downplay the impact of confidence because I used to even say confidence affects everything. That's why I'm so passionate about the fact that people need to have confidence that's like intrinsic Mm -hmm. because the job that you choose, the salary that you accept like the the person that you choose to spend your life with the friends that you have those are like all the decisions that you make are in alignment with your confidence level yep. like all of them yep the opportunities that you pursue mm-hmm. everything the mm-hmm. way that you talk to yourself like all of that is is impacted by that and i don't think people think about it mm-hmm. enough yeah, that that is the case. Whoever, all of like you said, all of the exes that you've ever had, people that you spent time with, invested energy and money and resources into, they are a clear a mirror or like a <laughs> portal yep. into your state of mind and your confidence levels at that time. Yep. So I would never talk bad about any of my exes, my ex wife, and because I chose them based on my my level of confidence. Would I ever go back? No, because I got a different level of confidence. I'm different now. <laughs> I'm different evolved. now. Right? Yeah, I have evolved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's all I got to say about that. I'm with you on that one. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because I think people base confidence just based on how fine somebody is or how attractive somebody is. And that's why I think now and thinking about that, I think that's why um, people got upset when I made that statement about feeling like men had a confidence issue Mm. because they think about confidence in a very superficial way 
but it's not about that. It's not about, oh, I think that I'm, I'm worth something. Like that's not, that's, that's surface level confidence. It's like confidence is also, I have this idea. Do I feel confident to execute on that? Do I trust myself to be able to commit to the things that I say I'm going to do? Like that it's all of those things as well. Your ability to do, to do things, the ability to accomplish things, the ability to be a better person, the ability to change past behaviors, all of that is linked to confidence. Yeah. So that confidence level, you got to have it because like you said, men, we, we think confidence is just, I got to be 6'3", 225. But there's a lot of guys that can be, they built like Thor, but up here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, I know some swole brothers who be struggling with women. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and even like small things, like if you're at work, when's the last time you asked for a raise? Mm -hmm. Is your confidence not there to, um, to advocate for what you deserve? Or, you know, it's the statistic people talk about all the time that like, um, I know women in particular, I wouldn't be surprised if black men as well, maybe don't ask for as high salaries as white men do in comparison. Mm -hmm. I know that I've, um, the statistics, the research shows that one of the reasons why um, men earn more typically than women Mm -hmm. in similar roles is that men tend to ask for higher salaries than women do. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if white men also ask for higher salaries than black men do for similar roles. But I think that would be a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, that would be a good research study. Cause I, I never, I never thought of that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> are gate, are women gatekeepers of relationships? I think that they are currently not, but really? I think that they could be. Explain please. So I think that, I think right now men are dictating relationships Okay. Can you can you expound why do you think men are? I think that I think I feel like women are kind of going with the flow, low key. Like mm. we're kind of on men's time, and we, I I see a lot of women doing a lot for men that aren't. They're not theirs. Like mm. they're kind of waiting for them to be ready, waiting for them to choose them, waiting for them to cut off other options, waiting mm. for them to like do all of these things. Mm. And rather than walking away, they're just kind of like in limbo and they're having kids with these men and they're living, moving in with these men. And it's like a pseudo commitment, mm. but it's not like it's it's not like having a child with someone doesn't secure them in your life. And I think that I just think women aren't putting a lot of requirements on men. And so Mm -hmm. men are doing what they want to do rather than rather than women being intentional about insisting upon what they desire. Mm. I can I can see that. But let me ask you this. Is that because women are trying to be like men now i think women are i think a lot of women are not confident in what they bring to the table and some of them are not really bringing anything to the table and if if that's the case then you can't be confident in what you bring to the table so i think a lot of women fear that if they put restrictions on or they put requirements on a man then they will lose that man because he'll be like, I don't got to deal with this from her. Like, I'll just, you know, whatever. Which maybe that if you bring nothing to the table, he will absolutely do that. Which means you need to focus on bringing more to the table. If you bring something to the table, the thought of losing you or the reality of losing you, why once you let him walk away, will make him realize that he was missing out and he'll be back. 
Now, do you want him when he comes back? That's one thing, but he'll be back. You know, I think that, I think it's a fear thing and a scarcity mindset where women are like, most women know, they they know that they want relationships and they want these things, but they're, I think they're afraid to, to say that that's what they want and afraid that it's like, I'll take pieces of him. Mm-hmm. Ra- I would rather have just pieces of him than to have none of him mm-hmm. rather than I don't want pieces. If I can't have all of you, I don't want any of you. So they're just kind of going with mm. going with the flow. And women don't realize the 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 power that they do have. Yeah. Yeah. And the to be fair, I think a lot of the uh manosphere <laughs> is saying that to women. They're like, um, women have women control access to sex, men control mm-hmm. access to relationships. Yep. And they're saying that narrative a lot. And men believe that now. A lot of them think that to be true. But if if I know it, that's just reason. Like if I if I know that this person brings value to my life, the thought of them removing that value, if I don't get on board with upgrade, as I say, upgrading their subscription, <laughs> then I'm gonna do what's necessary to keep them. It's like if YouTube is like, okay. We're going to start charging now. Mm. I know it was a free platform, but it's going to be $5 a month now. Mm. Yes, there are some people who are going to be like, well, I don't really use YouTube anyway. So I don't, I'm not going to pay the $5 a month. Mm. So y'all can take y'all's videos and you can go. But then there's also people who are like, $5, that's not that bad given how much value I get from YouTube. So I'm going to pay to upgrade. I'm going to pay to continue mm-hmm. my subscription so I can continue mm-hmm. to have access to this stuff. It's the same way in relationships. Like if they see the value in who you are, the thought of leaving, you leaving and removing that all that value that they got, mm-hmm. then they'll pay whatever you're requiring. Mm, that's good. I like that. <laughs> No, that's dope. I might have to use that. You can use it. Okay. <laughs> I'll you at it. you. I'll at you and make sure. Yeah, you got it. it. That's what's up. That's <laughs> good. I like that because there's guys who are willing to sacrifice what they have at home to go and slide in somebody's DM. And I'm like, why? Why make the necessary? Why sacrifice everything that you have for? You know what I'm saying? To slide in somebody DM, I'm like, dude, she's going to screenshot it. She's going to send it to whoever, put it on social media. Like, I don't think a lot of guys just don't think. I'm just like, man, you willing to sacrifice it all. And she ain't gonna, she probably don't even like you anyway, but you're just trying to shoot your shot. So let me ask you this, because I saw something recently that said this, and it was that a lot of men don't actually believe that women will leave. So that so they'll do a lot of things because they don't really think that she'll leave. That is very true. You think that's true? That is very true. Some mm-hmm. guys are so confident because chances are they done probably put her through hell already and she stayed. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Because sometimes it's about that test. Sometimes, and not saying it's intentional, but say something goes awry, something you have some issues in the in the relationship. And she's mm-hmm. like, you know what? We're gonna stick this out that's the hard part because it's like you want to to it's like you want to exercise forgiveness but you also don't want to give the impression that you are to be played with you know that it's you can treat me any kind of way and I'll still stay that's hard but it boils down to and I tell women this all the time what is his moral compass like Mm -hmm. you know I'm saying what what is his belief system like what is his North star? What does he believe in? Who is he accountable to? Does he have mentors? All this stuff, like take into mm-hmm. account because if he's going to do something crazy before he decides to do it, he's going to think, Oh, I got an answer to, to this guy. Or, you know, for me personally, I'm like, I know God will whoop me if I decide to do something stupid. You know what I'm saying? That's just my personal conviction. So my wife yeah. had nothing to worry about. Now, that, that doesn't negate me doing foolishness. But for the most part, she's no, I'm not going to do anything crazy. But it just all depends on the guy and what does he value? Because if he if he believed he's his own judge and jury and he isn't accountable to anybody, 
he's going to do you wrong again because what's the consequence? I think that's so good. And it kind of reminds me of um, like when we talk about <clears throat> kingdom relationships and like kingdom women um, and, you know, people love to quote the scripture, like mm-hmm. he who finds a wife, finds good thing and yeah. obtains favor from the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> and that that does imply that there is a favor attached to identifying your wife and, you know, choosing her. And I just think a lot of men don't think about if I know that there is favor attached to her, mm. what the consequence is of betraying or deceiving her like I think you know like if you're mishandling someone sent to multiply your life to as people like to say a helpmate to Mm -hmm. you know this person that is supposed to be equally yoked which if you know, a yoke is intended to carry burden so she's intended to help you carry the burden Mm -hmm. what is the consequence of doing those kinds of things behind her back and to her you know it just boils boils down to what he's dealing with what what his temptation is what is his issue Mm -hmm. you know i'm saying i my wife know my issues (laughs) (laughs) you know my struggle (laughs) i'm just i'm just being honest like she should yeah she she already know you know what i'm saying so you know, if we somewhere or something, she's like, let's not walk down this aisle. Let's walk down that aisle. <laughs> you know trying saying? to help. Trying yeah. to help. Yeah. You know, now, now that doesn't mean she's totally responsible for my decision making. Right. But and I always tell people, marry somebody who can see your blind spots. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can, you know, kind of help you navigate through some things. Because some things like when you're driving, you know, a lot of times people get in accidents because they don't see that car. Yeah. You know, but yeah. if you, you marry somebody who can see that car, they like, mm-hmm. nah, let's let's bust a left. Let's go over here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, we don't want to get over in that lane yet. There's right. a car right there. Mm-hmm. We, do we might do that later. We're not going to do that right now. Now right. is not the time. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. it just depends on that guy's North Star and, and, and who does he value and who is he accountable to. And I know that can that can sound like outdated old school stuff, but I just I just believe that. You know, some men just not going to do things. They're just not going to throw away everything that they work hard for. Some guys will because they know they can. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, and I don't even think that's far fetched. Like even it may seem outdated, but there is there's so much research that talks about the power of accountability and having accountability partners or people to hold you accountable. And so I don't even think that that's an outdated principle at all but I don't think people talk about it necessarily in terms of relationships you hear people talk about counseling like marriage counseling and stuff like that but not really okay well even who are you going to for advice when you're having issues within your marriage like are you going to other married people are those married people happy are those married people modeling healthy communication within their marriage like what where are you going when things get difficult? Because they will. It's not if they get difficult, it's when they do. Yes. Yes, I totally agree. And again, if we have more uh, mentors and stuff like that, and, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with accountability. You just want to make sure you keep your hands clean, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, people will come for you and situations will arise. It just depends on your decision making and i wouldn't even base that on i wouldn't even base that on your decision making because i ask i ask women too how do you know if he's a good leader like how, mm-hmm. what embodies a good leader to you because mm-hmm. if he's going to be the quote-unquote leader and the head of your home like what does that look like yeah that's a good question i'm glad you asked people that i think that's a good question and i think that for a lot of men i don't think i, I heard a quote once and it was saying that people might not be following you because you might not give the impression that you know where you're going. Mm. And I think (laughs) that that's, (laughs) I think that's helpful to think about because if you're not doing a good job as a man at leading your own life, how are you expecting or, and how am I as a potential wife of yours expecting that you're going to be able to not only handle yourself, but handle me and lead our children like if you're not even able to handle and lead your own life in a way that's productive and that produces fruit so 
I think I think men yell out leadership as like a birthright thing that they have been appointed into, mm-hmm. but it's a skill. So you have to learn how to do that. And it starts with you leading your own life before you start leading other people and determining where you're headed because you can't, like, I'm not just going to get in the car with you and we're supposed to be trying to get to Delaware. Mm. And you've (laughs) never been to Delaware before. You have no navigation system on. We just free riding. How long is it going to take for us to get to our destination? You have to have some idea of where you're trying to go or say for instance we haven't even decided where we're trying to go where like what's the what's the likelihood that we're going to get where we're trying to go if we haven't even established a destination the navigation doesn't work until you put a nav a destination in there mm-hmm. right you have to and, know where you're trying to go to get there and then on top of that he has he has too much ego in order to listen to her advice yeah, he's like, no, I'm the leader. Yeah. He ain't put no destination and navigation, but he's like, nope, don't need your instructions. We're good. I got it. We're going to get there. And so you just along for the joy ride. And it's going to take years to get where you're trying to go because you don't even know where that is. I don't even know where it is. That's why I, I, I have a mission statement for our home. And we know the mission statement. If oh, it that's doesn't, nice. Yeah, if it doesn't, because I'm like, how is it that McDonald's have a mission statement and you don't have one for your home? That's nice. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's, I like that. And uh, it's serve God, love family, create dope memories. Real simple. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't align with those three things, then we're not doing it. So if we plan on giving somebody some money, does it align with the mission? If we yeah. plan on doing this, does it like you got to have some kind of North Star to know where you got in your family? Oh, I like that one. I might have to take that one. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we got a little little plaque in the house. Really? Yeah, yeah the kids see it. Everybody see it. It's, it's our little North Star. So that's, you know, like you said, you got to have some direction. Where are you leading your family? Yeah, because like you said, it helps with when things come up. Like the decision making is easier. I think that's the other part, too, when we talk about and I know women generally don't like the term submission just in general yeah. oh. um, because it's like they equate that to like slavery or something. But um, I think when I think about submission, it is in a situation where me and you don't agree, can I, can I trust and give you the autonomy to make the decision? And if I, and in order for me to do that, I have to believe that you're going to consider our best interest when you make the final decision so i think that um that helps with that because if i understand that you know what's best for us as a unit and then you're considering me in the decision making process i don't necessarily have to be the person making every decision if i believe that my interests are being represented as the decision making process is taking place i love that yeah do you have the best decision for us? Right. Not just your own. And, you know, and, and I, and I struggled in that area. My first marriage, cause I was selfish. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And she would tell me, and I'm like, I'm not selfish. I give <laughs> you my check. I pay these bills. You know what Damn. I'm saying? But in the grand scheme of things, I was like, I was selfish. You know what I'm saying? So not at a motor, I, I see, but like you said, you got to have somebody who have your, be- and, and if he isn't doing that in the dating process, it's not going to happen when you're married. No, because that's not a, a, a light switch that you flip on. It's like, okay, I can consider you now. You're my wife. No, like if you're selfish, that's going to be a recurring theme. You have to get a hold of that before, or it's going to get worse. It's going to amplify. I've, I've heard that, um, I've heard this when people talk about having kids. They say that um, having kids amplifies any issues that were already present within the relationship like how people think having a baby is just going to fix everything. And then I I would argue that marriage does the same thing, that marriage probably amplifies whatever issues you didn't correct in the dating process. Yes, that is very true. Because when you're dating, and this is just my opinion, when you're dating, when you're just in a relationship, you can always kind of break the relationship. Yeah, just leave. Yeah, you just out. Yeah. You know, here's your stupid key. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Now, when you marry, <laughs> kick me out uh-huh. if you want to. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, both of our name on this, on this, on this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, daddy, you can't just kick out daddy. The kid's like, where's daddy? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's not as easy to separate. No. Yeah, so so the whole dating thing is so that there is a difference because people be like, what's the difference between dating and being, you know, being in a relationship and being married? There is a difference. Um, and sometimes even to marriage detriment, sometimes we even get too comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, we just kind of take them for granted. Like, well, they ain't going nowhere. You get too comfortable. And then that's when you start having troubles because the things that you used to do to keep their attention, you're not doing it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being taken for granted, that sucks. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. I have one last question for you because we've been kicking it. Oh, yeah. You said 30 minutes. I said no, 30 no, minutes. No, no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we here now what is the best piece of advice you ever received concerning relationships so this came from my mom I quote her a lot actually um and it's deal with people according to what you know about them and I um when she said it it wasn't necessarily in a dating or relationship context but I think it applies so beautifully because going back to like what we talked about earlier if I am saying that I am, I want to be in a relationship with you and that I want to be intentional and move forward towards all these goals, I have to deal with you not based on how my mom has dealt with my dad, how, you know, these relationship gurus tell me I need to react or respond within a situation. I have to get to know you and understand what you need because I have to tailor my approach to you. And so in the more I know about you, the better I am at being able to diffuse arguments or to inspire you in ways that you need to be inspired or to comfort you in times where you're lacking in maybe motivation or um, when you're sad or something happens negatively throughout your day. Like I have to learn how to adapt what I know and like who I am to best show up for you and I think that that's the essence of healthy relationships is not sacrificing who you are but allowing who you are to to be fluid Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in ways that don't sacrifice your values morals and beliefs but in ways that allow you to better show up for the person that you've chosen Mm, I love that that's good yeah because isn't it interesting how we get into relationships and then we try to change that person it's like I thought you liked me for who I was yeah exactly (laughs) like you're you're not fully accepting of who I am I feel like like you you can't get into a relationship hoping that the person is going to change into the version that you want them to be you have to you have to go in saying that if this is the thing I think you have to go in with the belief that even if this person never changed, I would still choose them. And I don't think a lot of people do that. I love that. That's good. Yeah. And very few people think about that either. Mm -hmm. Because they may never become, they never, they, they may never make any more money than they're making now. They may never become any more compassionate than they are now. They may never become, more patient than they are now are you okay with that mm. Ooh, that's a sobering thought yeah <laughs> yeah oh my god well are, is there anything else that you would like for us to know well tell us about what you got going on next uh or what you already have established kind of and then give us your information as far as social media handles and all the other good stuff so what's going on in kiana's world so right now my focus is, and I've been, I've been honestly running from it a bit, but I keep feeling called to it, um, is that I'm, I am embarking on having more of these conversations like on YouTube and things like that, um, throughout my own platform. Mm-hmm. I, I go through seasons where I'm like very consistent on like Instagram and stuff. And then I'm just like, oh, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but I'm taking my talents over to YouTube 
um in that way because before I was just doing like my whole persona has changed over the last couple of years where before I was I went by Stony Brooks I was a singer songwriter that was my focus Mm -hmm. and then I was like I felt a bit slighted in that I realized that I had intelligent things to say but people didn't know that and so in I just felt called to do greater things And so then I became who I am now. And so now I'm sort of rebranding like YouTube and stuff because before it was just like covers and all that stuff and vacation blogs and stuff. And so now I'm bringing these conversations over to YouTube. Um, So like every week moving forward, starting tomorrow, people can expect to get a video related to like relationship related topics. Like I said, the one for tomorrow is five mistakes women are making that are preventing him from committing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then on Sundays, I'll be doing live streams. Mm -hmm. So um, my intention is to have a show similar to Kevin Samuels, but not, but like just where I can converse with men. And so men can call Mm -hmm. in and we can have, these conversations about whatever the topic is for that that stream Mm. um and then in addition i i do like workshops and stuff with around like personal development um self-development and things like that and then my book ready to mingle Mm. is a great resource so ready to mingle interestingly is it's a 66 day like program i would say in the form Mm. of a book So like every day for 66 days, you have like either a journal prompt, you have an exercise or an activity to do Mm -hmm. as well as like reading that helps you unpack your baggage Mm -hmm. and connect the pieces of your life. Um, um, Yeah. And then in terms of social media handles, you can find me on Instagram, um, which is Kiana L. Williams. Uh, I don't really do anything on Twitter, but on youtube my hand what well, it's youtube.com slash kiana williams tv but if you type in like kiana williams i think it'll probably come up okay um and those are my main those are my main places where you can find me right now okay cool oh and then the minglebrand.com if you want to be abreast of any workshops or courses or anything like that mm, okay yeah well i'll make sure i have everything linked up in the notes and where can we get your book from Amazon is the best way to get my book. Okay. And not only do you get the book from Amazon, make sure you leave a rating and review. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Leave a review. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We got to have a so that social media currency. So make sure y'all exactly. show Kiana some love and then make sure you pick up the book. Uh, I'm already subscribed to the YouTube channel. So uh, once you're with me, you're stuck with me. So. <laughs> Just to let I'll you know. You'll uh, call in one night on on a Sunday and do the. Hopefully, you could call in. I had once I announced it on the um when I was on Allen's live, I was so happy because somebody had emailed me and they were like, "Here's I'm so happy to hear that you're going to be going live. Here are some topics that you can consider talking about." And I was like, "All right." He was like, "Let me know if you want me to send over these articles that I've written about like these topics and you know getting some research behind them." I'm like, "Yes, thank you." So oh, I like to see. So that's what's up. Well, and so it's gonna be every Sunday. So is it is it gonna be this Sunday? Yeah, I'm gonna do the first one this Sunday. I don't know how many people will show up for the very first one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start Sunday. Well, I'm gonna make sure that I I jump in because I want to make sure that I support you and what you do. I appreciate so, that. I'm looking forward to that. Well, Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Kiana on Instagram, on YouTube. Go su- subscribe to the channel and uh, show her some love. So we would appreciate that. Also, if you are listening or watching this, make sure, well, if you're listening to it, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd love to hear from you as well. That also puts you in a drawing for a, a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free things. So make sure you leave that rating and review there. And make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching this via YouTube. Share this with a friend because who knows, someone might need this they can be a video away from changing their life. So I definitely appreciate it. Kiana, I want to uh, acknowledge you for being honest in the midst of the culture that we live in today um, and sticking to the morals and values of who you are and being authentic. So uh, I want to acknowledge you on those things. 
and acknowledge you for having the faith to step out and to share your message and already what you got going on with your platforms. I've seen some of your Instagram uh, videos concerning relationships. So that's what's up. Keep doing what you're doing. I believe you're like uh, one of the leaders of the new school for women because a lot of times I hear guys like, where's the women who are holding other women accountable or who, you know what I'm saying? So I believe there are some great coaches out there, but I think you can definitely be a leader of the new school. So I acknowledge you for those things.